let's discover the key morph. The key morph is what's called um, blend shape in Maya, pose morph uh, in Cinema 4D, shape keys in Blender, or morpher in 3ds Max. So here, this is the key morph in Duik for After Effects. So if you already know one of these 3D software, you'll understand right away what it does. But I'm going to show you. So with this simple square, I'm just going to create a few keyframes to have different shapes. First one, I'm going to keep the square. 10 frames later, let's do a rounded shape like this. And again, 20 frames later, maybe I could add some kind of a roof like this. And for example, a bit later again, from the original square, do this kind of shape. And the key morph is a tool to interpolate between these different shapes. Let's just select the keyframes and click on key morph. So that's very simple. You just now have a bunch of effects to control the different shapes. So there are two ways to use these effects. The first way is to use only the first effect where you can use the key selection. Just input the number of the keyframe of the shapes you want to show. One is the square, the second, the third, or the fourth frame key. So what's interesting is that you can animate this property, of course. For example, going from the fourth shape to the first one, and then back to the third, for example. And what's interesting with the key morph is it's going to interpolate between these different keyframes without in going through the, the in-between keyframes. I go from the first to the fourth without interpolating the second and the third. So you can go from one shape to one another arbitrarily, directly. So it's really easy this way to just select a shape. And it's very useful for lip sync, for example, where you just like to select the mouse you need. Of course, animating with a number is not very handy, but you'll see that you can use the connector with this to create a selector very, very useful. We'll see that later. The other way to use it is to uncheck the normalized weights on the first effect and use instead the other effects where you can set using the percent the key you want to show. Just make sure you keep the selection to zero on the first effect. Selection to zero and unchecked normalize. And then you can use the effects to adjust, go to the shape you'd like, and you can even mix them arbitrarily, any shape, and you can combine this way all the shapes, all the poses, the key morphs does the mix for you, and you can combine any number of uh, keyframes, of, of poses, of shapes together. It's very light and very easy to use. The first key is not needed. It's the neutral, the original keyframe. Let's just use only the other one. So this is how it works. It's very, very simple. Just try it. You'll see you can do a lot of stuff with it. The interesting thing with the second way is that you can go above 100% to amplify the corresponding key which is very useful for facial expressions, for example. So that's a very simple tool. We'll see a bit uh, in more details just, just after. Let's see a concrete example of using this key morph with expressions and lip sync on this simple face. Let's start with the lip sync. It's a pre-composition for the mouth I can use for the lips. So the first step is inside this pre-composition to draw the different shapes for the phonemes we're going to need. For information, the phonemes you can find, easily find a list of the usual phonemes to be used in English, but they depend on the language you're animating. So um, this list has to be adjusted to your language. I'm planning to publish a, an example for English and French, either in a future tutorial or in the book about Duik we are going to publish soon, or even maybe a book about animation I'd like to write. So let's just keep in touch. In the meantime, let's just create here the usual phonemes uh, used in English. So I'm going to animate this path to add a keyframe for each phoneme in the timeline. So first, we need the rest pose, the neutral, where the character is not talking, the mouth is closed and resting. And for each new phoneme, I'm going to add a marker on the layer to add in the comment the number of the keyframe and what phoneme it is. This is to help later the connection and the animation. A few frames later, I can add the next phoneme. Be careful when you 
start the you draw a new phoneme start from the rest pose this works better with the key morph it's better to work away from the original pose to make it work better And here it is, the eight usual phonemes for English. The markers are not mandatory at all, it's just a guide, a reference, to help the animation. Then, when it's done, you just have to select the keyframes and click on Key Morph. And now, in the effects of the layer, you can use the selection, the key selection, to select the shape you need. For example, here, third will be E, and we can animate this by just changing the phoneme we would like to go from one to the other. Usually, we, you start with the rest pose, the first one. And for example, if I'd like the mouse to say Jewick, then I need the D, which is the 7, then U, number 5, and then E, number 3, the K, K, we don't see it, so we get back to the rest pose after the E. And this way you can animate Jewick. This is a bit too slow, let's just make it much faster. And this way you can animate really easily Jewick. Jewick. Ellipsync. Of course, we could add more details to this, but you get the, the process. And if I wanted to animate this not with number, uh, but with something more, more handy, I can use the connector to create a selector for these phonemes. For example, in the face composition, let's add on the mouth layer, use add a drop down menu control so that I can list the phonemes in there. And now I just have to select the menu property in the timeline and then options for the connector, pick control to select it. It's the value, the minimum value is one, the maximum value is eight because there are eight phonemes. Next, and I can go into the pre-composition, select the eight keys of the key morph, the eight effects, and click on key morph to connect this to the menu. And now I can use this menu to select the phoneme and, of course, do the animation of the mouth of the lip sync really easily here. Let's animate Jewick again. Rest, then D, and then U, E, K, which is the rest pose. Jewick, Jewick. Jewick, Jewick, Jewick. So that's really easy to animate a lip sync. Uh, then you just have to have the right timing. This is the animation work. So this is the first way where you just need to select one of the keyframe and interpolate between them. If, on the contrary, you need, like in an expression, to mix different shapes, different keys, we're going to use the other method. And let me show you an example with this face and create a few expressions. Don't forget to always keep a rest pose, a neutral uh, shape at the first keyframe. But uh, the creation process is the same as we just did before. Let's make this character smile, for example. I can use any, any kind of effect. For example, here the mouth is a precomp, so I could use the distort Bezier warp effect, for example, to adjust the shape of the mouth. I like this effect very much. So let's just animate this to have a nice smile. Don't forget to keep the neutral pose, the rest pose, at the first frame. So here I need to reset these properties to get back to the original pose. And then, for example, when the character smiles, I can also change the shape of the eyes. 
And that's what's interesting also with the Keymorph is that you can combine as many properties as you need to change the expression. And now, for example, if I want the character to be angry, let's just copy and paste the original keyframe, the neutral pose, and from there, draw the, the angry expression. And now I could even, for example, um, make the character look to the left or to the right. Let's just do this and animate the position and the rotation of the different parts. As this is a new property, I just need to copy and paste the keyframes on for all expressions. You need, like this, keyframes for each key. You need all the keyframes for all the properties included in the keymorph. And let's do the same on the other side, for example. And again, I'm copying and pasting the neutral post, the original one. And here, actually, it should be the neutral pose. So let's copy and paste the keyframe I need because I want these new keys to rotate the head to make the character look from left to right, but I don't want the expression combined with this. It should be the neutral pose, just like this, so that each key is used for one single expression. So in the end, I have the neutral key, happy, sad, left, right. For example, this is just an example. We could, for another example, add a, a pose to make it open the, the mouth. So don't forget to copy and paste the first keyframe and start from this one to open the mouth. Okay. And now, for example, I may also animate the face to move the chin. So I can add a new keyframe on the path on the face behind. So again, make sure you have a keyframe for all keys. And then I can adjust this final expression. And you can add as many keys as you like, like this. Just make sure you have a keyframe for all properties for all keys. And then select all the animated properties and click on Keymorph in the Links and Constraint panel. And now on the first layer which was selected, you'll find all the keys. And this time we're not going to animate the key selection here because we want to mix the keyframes. So I'm just unchecking the normalize option. And maybe I could also rename the keys so it's easier to animate. The first one is the neutral one, which we're not going to use because it's the same as setting all the others to 0%. And now it's quite easy to animate this because you can simply change the weight of each expression and you can combine them. For example, the character can smile and you can adjust the value precisely as you wish. And while smiling, you can make it look to the right for example, and open the mouth. You can combine this way as many keys as you'd like, all of them, to look right, look left. Everything can be combined and you can do anything you'd like. This is very powerful. For example, here, the same with an angry character. You can have him angry and open and close the mouth. Look right, look left. And I show you in the next part of the tutorials how you can rig a complete face rotating in three dimensions and use this tool in a very advanced way and even use it with the combining it with the connector to make it easier to animate. So this keymorph is quite simple to create but very, very useful. To learn how to rig this advanced head using the keymorph and the connector in Duik, you can follow the official and comprehensive video course about Duik Angela available on rxlaboratory.org. The link is available in the description of this video.